Hello, and welcome back to the Crime Reel. For today's true crime narration, we shall be visiting Osaka in Japan to look at the story of Rika Okada and Yuri Oishi. Both Rika and Yuri were born in 1985, Rika in Japan and Yuri in Brazil. However, soon after Yuri's birth, her family moved to Japan, which is where she spent the majority of her childhood. Rika and Yuri first met when they attended the same elementary school and remained friends throughout their time there and also in junior high school. After junior high, Yuri moved back to Brazil to complete her education and as time moved on, the two girls eventually lost touch. Yuri had been a dual citizen throughout her childhood, but after reaching adulthood, it became necessary for her to make a declaration of citizenship, whereby she would give up claim on one of her nationalities. Yuri decided that she would be a Brazilian citizen. Rika went on to become a nursing assistant working in Osaka. After a period of time living in Brazil, Yuri decided to return to Japan. However, with her Brazilian education and citizenship, she found it difficult to find employment. She eventually secured work at a small convenience store. In January 2014, when both Rika and Yuri were 29 years old, Yuri sent Rika a friend request on Facebook. Despite the women having not seen each other since they were around 15 years old, Rika accepted the request and the two began to reconnect online. Before long, the two women decided to meet up at a local restaurant, with Rika even updating her Facebook status to say how she was so excited to be reconnecting with an old friend after many years. Whilst living in Japan, Yuri had been sharing an apartment with a Chinese woman who had returned to Shanghai in mid-March 2014. The lease on the apartment was due to end a couple of weeks later, but Yuri agreed with the landlord to extend this for an additional month. On Friday 21st of March 2014, Rika went to work as normal. She completed her shift and headed home to her apartment in the Nishinauri ward in Osaka. She later sent a text to a work colleague stating that she felt sick and so would not be at work for a while. Rika also sent a similar text to her parents. Over the following few weeks, the text to her workplace and parents continued. Then they suddenly stopped around mid-April 2014. Rika's family repeatedly tried to make contact with her, but were unsuccessful. Eventually, at the beginning of May, Rika's mother became so concerned that she went to her daughter's apartment to find out what was going on. When her mother entered the apartment, at first glance everything seemed very neat and tidy, but then she saw blood on one of the rugs and blood stains down the side of the bed. Her mother immediately alerted the authorities. When the police began their investigation, they found that the last time anyone had seen Rika was when she left her workplace on Friday the 21st of March. They then discovered that a call had been made to a delivery service two days later, on the 23rd of March, to arrange for a parcel to be collected from Rika's apartment. This parcel was to be delivered to a Tokyo address. The delivery charge was paid using Rika's credit card. On the 24th of March, a delivery driver picked up a box from the apartment. It was approximately 2 metres long and weighed around 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. The driver was told to treat the item with care as there was a delicate clay doll inside. As police investigated further, they found that Rika had applied for a new passport on the 27th of March. This had been approved and subsequently collected. However, when the authorities reviewed the details of this passport, it was found that the picture included within it 
was of Uri and not Rika. Shortly after obtaining the passport, Yuri had opened several credit cards in Rika's name and used one of these to purchase a flight from Haneda, Tokyo's international airport, to Shanghai in China. At the end of April, Yuri's Chinese flatmate returned to Japan for a short visit and then the two women flew to Shanghai in early May. It came to light that Yuri had previously applied to extend her visa for living in Japan. This had been denied and as a Brazilian citizen, she had been in Japan illegally for over a year. She had no money, would soon have nowhere to live and was unable to leave the country as her illegal status would have been discovered. On the 21st of May, the police went to investigate the package which had been sent to Tokyo from Rika's apartment two months earlier. It was traced to a short-term storage unit in Hachioji City, west of Tokyo. The parcel was marked with the word Dole. Inside the parcel, they found a cardboard box. Inside this cardboard box, wrapped in plastic, was the body of Rika Okada. She had been stabbed over 50 times. It was found that Rika had no defensive wounds on her hands and arms, indicating that she had probably been stabbed when she was either unconscious or after she had died. The storage unit where the box was found had been rented and paid for in Rika's name. Forensic examination of the box revealed Yuri's fingerprints. By the time that Rika's body was found, Yuri was already in China. With no extradition treaty between China and Japan, complicated further by Yuri being a Brazilian citizen, bringing her to justice for her crime would prove to be extremely difficult. Shortly afterwards, Yuri was arrested for entering China on a fake passport. Usually with this type of immigration matter, Yuri would have been deported back to her country of citizenship, in this case, Brazil. However, Japanese authorities did not want this to happen, as they were keen to get her back to Japan to face the charge of Rika's murder. A lengthy and complex diplomatic process followed, and over two and a half years later, once the red tape was finally unravelled, Yuri was returned to Japan on 25th of January 2017. She was arrested and charged with Rika's murder on the flight back to Japan. As she arrived at the airport, she was ambushed by waiting journalists, but made no comment. The trial began in Osaka on the 22nd of February 2019. Yuri was facing either indefinite imprisonment or the death penalty if she was found guilty. Her defence team argued that she had been diagnosed with Dissociative Identity Disorder. This disorder results in the person having multiple personalities where each personality has no control over or knowledge of what the other does. Yuri claimed that she had no memory of the night that Rika died but remembered looking down and seeing a person who looked like her stabbing Rika. The prosecutors argued against this defence, stating that Yuri was fully aware of her actions and the murder was premeditated, indicated by the purchasing of the knife. The trial lasted three weeks, and on the 14th of March 2019, Yuri was found guilty of murder. She was sentenced to indefinite imprisonment. Yuri's Chinese flatmate has never been charged with any crime. Questions have been asked as to whether she was aware of or involved in the murder. Press photographs of the two holding hands while they were in China has led to speculation that they were romantically involved and may have planned the murder together so that they could start a new life in China using Rika's identity. None of this has ever been proven. That concludes today's story of Rika Okada and Yuri Oishi. Thanks very much for listening to that story. As always, please add any comments down below. And now it's time for Petty Crime. Kate Quinn has sent in some pictures of a 12-year-old rescue kitty 
called Buster. He loves to purr and cuddle, and for those of you interested in this ponytail palm plant, it didn't last very long. It's been dusted for paw prints, and they are currently looking for a tuxedo cat that may answer to the name of Buster. Marianne from Michigan has sent in some pictures of Odin and Freya, two beautiful Russian blue cats. Odin has a blind eye from birth, Freya is his consort. For those interested in Marianne, who's quite a frequent commenter actually, she is a trauma ICU nurse as well in Michigan. Thanks Marianne for sharing the Russians with us. Cheers, Odin and Freya. Thanks very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. Did you know Japan has the world's deepest underwater post box? It is located in a fishing town called Suzumai and is 30 feet underwater. To date, well over 30,000 items have been posted in this box. Goodbye.